Good morning, everyone, and welcome to church on such a glorious Sunday morning. We're so glad that you're here. We're going to begin our service uh, by singing our opening chant, Blessing to the World. <laughs> joined us in person or on Facebook Live or Zoom. For those who are here in person, please be sure to silence your cell phones. Thank you. And so now let us pray. Join me as I know that there is only one power, one life. It is love. It is goodness. It is all that there is. It is everything that I see and everything that I do not see. And each and every one of us is made of the essence, the energy of this loving one presence. I know that we are here, each of us, by divine appointment. I know that each and every one of us is a unique and perfect manifestation of that one. And that even if we see or seemingly differences of opinion and fractures in our society, that each and every being is part of that same one. We are part of the whole, and each is necessary. We are each here, and we are each necessary, and I am grateful for that. I know that this time that we have together, that we share this perfect, wonderful North Hollywood Church service today, is blessed by all the people who are making it possible, helping us and doing what they need to do for us, what we need to do for ourselves. We are blessed by our musicians and soloists who sing for us and, and play for us with inspiration. I truly know that we are blessed by everyone who creates this time, who gives of their time to make this happen, make it happen on Zoom and Facebook and here in person. And I know we are especially blessed by Dr. Mark his high consciousness. He's opened himself to be that vessel for divine word. And the divine word comes through him with clarity, with purpose, with eloquence. And every single one of us is uplifted because of it. We are inspired today and we inspire one another just because we gather together. I am grateful for all of this, for this time, and I know it's already done. And together we say, Amen. Amen. I am part of the great mind of God, and God is all that I am. God is love, God is peace, God is life itself.
please rise and join me in saying the Lord's Prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So join, join me in singing our congregational song, which is I am in the whole, I am at home in the heart of God. to meditate for the next five minutes. <clears throat> so I will invite you to close your eyes and silently repeat the mantra, God's the love that I am. God's the love that I am. If your mind wanders, just bring it back compassionately and lovingly to silently repeating the mantra, God's the love that I am. And I'll bring us out of the meditation in five minutes.
Okay, if everybody come back to the present for a moment. Um, I'm Blair Thompson. I'm president of the board of NHCRS. I'm uh, uh, glad to be here. Um, we need your help. Next week, next Sunday at 11.30, we are having our annual meeting. Our annual meeting is one of the things we have to do for, uh, because we're a nonprofit corporation. Um, and to do that, we have to have a quorum. So we need to have enough people here. Last year, we were like two people away at two minutes before the, uh, the service started. So we want to we avoid that and get everybody here. Um, everybody's welcome. Uh, one of the most important things is who's a member. Uh, and that's one of the things I want to talk about today, just to let you know. You're a member if, you have a, if you're a card-carrying member of the church. So if you've gone to the Quick Start class and you've filled out the paperwork and you get a card back, you're a member. If you don't know if you're a member or not, call the office. Don't wait till next Sunday and, and, uh, and, and make our people have to try and figure it out because it's, it's, it's going to be harder then. Um, so other important thing, it's just going to be in person or on Zoom. It's not on Facebook. So don't go to Facebook. Uh, if, you want, if you're on Facebook normally, this is one of the things we can't do because Facebook doesn't let us take attendance. So it's important that way. So go to nhcrs.org and click on the big Zoom button and you'll get into the Zoom meeting. Um, when you sign on, sign on with a name that makes sense. Don't sign on with Mickey Mouse or Minnie Mouse. Uh, sign on with your name. If there's two of you there, have both of your names on your sign and that makes it so much easier for the people who are uh, hosting and taking attendance. Um, uh, 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 let's see, as a bonus, we're going to have the whole band here next week, right, Sam? Yes, so we'll have some great music. Um, and we've had a lot of people asking, just as an aside, uh, we will be continuing our COVID protocols kind of indefinitely um, so that uh, we're respecting each other, so that we can ha everybody feel as comfortable as possible. Um, we're not going to be the first to make changes here. We're going to be kind of among the last because we just think it's, it's fair to everybody else. Um, so, next Sunday at 11.30, come to the service, stay for the meeting, come to the service, eh, don't come to the meeting, it's okay, just check in, um, and that's what we need you to do. Um, so, I look forward to seeing you here, I look forward to seeing people in person and online. I think Reverend Sin's got something a lot more fun than what I talk about. <laughs> well, the service is at 9.45, but the meeting is at 11.30, so don't come for the service at 11.30. You can come the following week, because that's when we go to two services. <laughs> now, you all know that one of the things we do really well here is food. So, if you come to our in-person meeting next week, you will be re rewarded not by a potluck, but by a dessert luck. This is your chance to bring dessert, which we'll eat after the meeting, as a reward for your attendance and, you know, whatever, just to hang out. Um, so whether you want to bring pie, I like coconut cream, or just a bag of Oreos, I like those too. We want to see you here. So I hope you will join us. And yeah, dessert luck Sunday, right? All good. Before the story, before the body, before the name, beyond the mind's attempt to find or explain. Before the breath, beyond the sense of pleasure or of pain, and after death, and after death, I am within the heart.
melodies and the monuments of men. Oh, and after them, and after them, I am. Many differences separate us on the surface, yes. Thank you. Beautiful. Oh, here are my notes. All right, good morning. Welcome. It's good to have you here in Zoom land or Facebook land or right on Whitsitt Avenue. We're thrilled you're with us today. Uh, I'm doing a series on Angelus Arian's book, The Fourfold Way. Angelus Arian is a cultural anthropologist. And what she has done is she has studied the first land-based people on each continent, the indigenous people, and found that there are similarities. Now, they're not all exactly the same, what all indigenous people teach, but there, there is significant overlap. And I thought it would be fun to take a few weeks and look at these. So we have discussed the way of the warrior leader. Now, all of these archetypes exist in all of us. So uh, we've done the warrior leader. We've talked about the healer. And today, uh, we will discuss the way of the teacher. So uh, as with all of these archetypes, there's a direction associated with the way of the teacher. And the way of the teacher is the West. The element is water. The fourfold way is to be open to outcome. The season is autumn, and the instrument is the clicking of sticks and bones. So the teacher assesses the human reservoir of wisdom. You know, there's, we say God is everywhere, so that means God being wisdom. Wisdom is everywhere. And what wisdom have any of us or all of us have we received? You know, the principle that guides the teacher is to be open to outcome, not attached to outcome. Not about you, but I think in most situations in my life, I probably go in with an outcome in mind. I really do. So this is more of a stretch for me to always try to be open to outcome. So the teacher has wisdom. The teacher teaches trust. You know, it's a practice to trust and understand uh, and to have the understanding of how important it is that we be able to detach. See, trust, I think, is the container in which the qualities of wisdom grow and those qualities are things like clarity and objectivity, discernment, detachment. So Mother Teresa, I think, embodied this archetype really, really well. And as a teacher, she used trust. She said, and I, you've probably heard this, but I've always loved it, I feel like a tiny pencil in God's hand. God writes through us, and however imperfect instruments we may be, he writes beautifully. So sh shamanic tradition accesses wisdom by learning how to trust and being comfortable with states of not knowing. Mm, right? that, it's, it's that not knowing, isn't it? Because mm, I don't know about you, but I'm one of those inquiring minds. I want to know. Yeah, I do. So the directness, uh, what do I say? The, uh, during times when we do not know, indigenous people consider it foolish to take action. Why would you take action? You don't know. The humanly, we say, well, I got to do something. It's like, no, you don't. Not yet. Maybe not. And an act of wisdom, it is an act of wisdom to wait 
and to trust. Trust what? Trust in a power greater than we are. Trust that more will be revealed. Trust that now is not the right time, but another time will be. See, I think that in, in shamanic traditions, there's a character of the trickster, and certainly in Native American uh, traditions. Uh, and the trickster functions as a teacher, but a teacher in this way. And, this, and I wonder if we don't have somebody like this in our life, that the, the trickster in shamanic traditions functions to uh, shock people into seeing their attachments. The trickster shocks people or says or does outlandish things so that people become aware of their own habitual patterns. Because what the trickster is ultimately doing is the trickster is teaching us something about detachment. You know? Now, this is not, not caring. So often when people hear detachment, they think, oh, he, he wants me to not care. And it's like, no, it's not that at all. Detachment is actually defined as the capacity to care deeply for, from an objective place. See, so I can care deeply, you can care deeply, but we can do that while we inhabit a very objective place. So what causes us to lose our sense of humor? There's a question there. Because if there's any place in our life where we lose our sense of humor, that is a place where we're attached. Yeah, absolutely. But if you still have a sense of humor, you are detached and flexible. Isn't that interesting to know? Now, personally, I think I have a sense of humor. But when I start to look at things, I think, wow. OK, I don't have much humor around that. I don't have humor around this. Well, I am really, really attached. So a man named Harris Owens, uh, many of you will have heard these, uh, has four immutable laws of spirit. And I like these. That whoever is present are the right people to be there. Hmm? How often do we go through life and we think, oh, I went to this event. And somebody wasn't there. Somebody was supposed to come to this class. They didn't come. No, whoever is present are the right people to be there. The next one is, whatever we start, when, whenever, excuse me, whenever we start, that is the right time. <laughs> whatever happens is the only thing that could have happened. And the last one is, when it's over, it's over. Yeah, that's it. So I love those. Wh who, whoever is present are the right people to be there. Whenever we start is the right time to start. Whatever happens is the only thing that could have happened. And when it's over, it's over. See, there, to me, these are all about acceptance rather than resignation. Mm -hmm. that, can we accept situations as they are, but then, here we are, we're these creative spiritual beings, but then be creative with it rather than be fatalistic or resigned or, oh my God, it's all going downhill. See, I think acceptance is an important part of detachment. And maybe, maybe a similar thread is this idea of turning things over, where we give it back to God. You know, say, all right, I've done everything I know how to do about this. God, this clearly is in your court. Because clearly I'm not making the progress with it I thought I would, so clearly this must be on your side of the fence. The feeling of resignation, I think, is is always a sign of detachment. I'm sorry, I've, I've, I've attached. What am I saying here? Let me just skip that. And I guess I have something better I want to say. So uh, William Bridges says, another way we learn about detachment is through loss. Now, I think the last couple of years have really taught us a lot about this, or at least have offered us an opportunity to learn more about this. And he has six categories. So there is the loss of attachments, the loss of turf, the loss of structure, the loss of a future, the loss of meaning, and the loss of control. And so you know, each type of loss is a humbling experience that teaches us about acceptance. It teaches us something about letting go. And gosh, I think in the last couple of years, we've had to accept an awful lot. I think we've had to let go of an awful lot. Just within our own community, the number of people who have transitioned out of this earthly realm into the next expression, boy, it's been a lot, a lot of people. And so like all of us, I've let go of lots of things. Don't you think of yourself as somebody who's let go of so many things? I certainly do. And I have proof of that, because everything I've let go of in my life has claw marks, deep, deep claw marks <laughs> on it, because I didn't say I let go easily. You know, Mark Twain said, a better idea than my own is to listen. Hmm. And I always thought my ideas were so brilliant. But a better idea than my own is to listen. See, because 
when we listen, listening to our guidance is a way of honoring the inherent wisdom that spirit is or has placed within each of us. So in the I Ching, this is the Chinese book of changes, uh, it uses uh, nature metaphors <clears throat> that remind us that we have to be like a great rooted tree by a flowing river, right? That we need both of those things. We need to balance our quiet time, you know, our inner life with activity, right? So big tree by the river. In the West, I think we know a lot about activity, about doing. You know, we always know, it's like, okay, what can I do? What can I do? I'm feeling uncomfortable. I should do something about this. Um, I'm having this thought. I should do something about this. So somebody said something or did something to me. I should do something about it. See, we know a lot about doing. We know a lot about movement, being in action. But I think we have to understand silence and solitude, that these are essential ways to open to the inner guidance that spirit has already given us. Right? These are essential to replenish our soul. And I think after what everybody has been through, I mean, I think we've experienced collective trauma in the last couple of years. And I don't know anybody whose soul couldn't use a little replenishing. Right? And so one of the things that will do that is for us to spend some time in silence. So in Stephen Mitchell, Stephen Mitchell is a great translator of, uh, of spiritual texts, and he has a translation of the Tao Te Ching. And he says, true mastery can be gained by letting things go their own way. It can't be gained by interfering. Wow, that is such a reminder to me to stay on my side of the fence, you know? That there are things that are just not my business and all that I am to do is to include them in prayer and surround them in light and love. So to develop the inner teacher, there are things that Angelus Arian suggests that we do. Right? So it's not about being a teacher in the world, it's about developing the inner teacher uh, within. And she says, yes, sitting, sitting meditation is really important. Asking for guidance. Your higher self knows exactly what you need to know, do, be, in any and every situation. But you know, we have to sit silently and ask for it to be revealed. I, you know, I've always loved this quote by Mother Teresa, which says, God is a friend of silence. And it's like, oh, don't you have anything else? You know, a friend of silence? Oh, I, I, you know, because I'm just an active mind kind of person here. But also, one of the things that really supports us in developing an inner teacher is having some increment of time on a daily basis where we are in solitude. Don't think, oh, I'm all alone, because when you're all alone, you sound like such a victim, you know? But I'm having a little time in solitude is a choice. It's empowering. It lifts me up. I don't know about you, but it, it certainly uh, fits for me that with all the loss that has happened, it's nice if there are some rituals for loss, just a way to remember. So in my own life, uh, my parents are gone. Uh, they've passed on. And so, but I pray with them and for them every day. And the way I do that is something that we teach that's really quite simple, but I feel like it really addresses it, is that I praise my mother, I raise my mother in the name of love. I praise my mother, I raise my mother in the name of love. And then peace and joy and freedom, and I think we're good, you know? Um, this is also, it is also a component of the way of the teacher to um, honor our ancestry, and now that's not really a science of mindy kind of thing, but I have found that in doing this, um, that in praying for my parents, like I said, who are gone, in doing that every day, I feel like I continue that relationship. I know my relationship with them has not ended because, you know, just their body is gone, their spirit continues on. And so what I'm praying for is for the good, for the evolution of their spirit. So I believe that these relationships continue to deepen. I, I think I've gotten closer to my parents since they're gone. Now that sounds crazy, right? I'm the human, how can that be? How can that be? But you know, relationships change and relationships evolve. And so one of those things that I get to do is, um, is include people who have passed on in my prayers every day. I think it's a mistake to think that, well, they're gone now, they don't have any problems. You know, so you know they, they finished, they've graduated, they've got the graduate degree, everything's great for them. Well, you know, every soul has its own journey. And I know my parents' journey continues on, just like the journeys of so many people in our church that we've lost recently. Our beloved practitioner, Dolores Cartolucci, passed recently. Now, I know if there's a next for anybody, there is certainly a next for Dolores. You know, I mean, she was just that kind of a person. 
You know, um, uh, Kurt Bronner, who was one of the dearest men in the world to me, uh, passed recently. You know, so I know everybody has lots and lots of loss. And so we have to have a way to hold loss in, in a way that allows us to process it and be with it. You know, and, and I'm not I'm talking about being in denial with it. She says also that the teacher has to really use their wisdom on a daily basis. So I ask myself, am I objective? Am I someone who can wait if I feel confused in a situation? Can I be discerning rather than judging? So judging, you know, you know the difference. Discerning comes from your higher mind. It comes from the spirit of God within you. you know? And judging, it is not your higher mind. At least it's not my higher mind. It is definitely the lower mind as far as I'm concerned. Um, and will I make decisions where I have clarity? Mm -hmm. I, I love that, that word clarity. In some place I remember reading, Ernest Holmes said if he had only one treatment to give, he would treat for clarity. Because clarity always indicates its own action. You know, when our mind is clear, it's like, oh, okay, now I know what I'm supposed to do. Now I know, now I understand. So I think, yes, we honor the roots that we have in our life. Yeah, this is a good, good aspect of the, of the teacher archetype. And also, she suggests this, and I really like this. And whatever your day of the month is that you celebrate your birthday, so like if you're April 1st or April 16th, the first of each month, you do something new that you've never done before. So that at the end of the year, you have opened yourself to 12 completely new experiences. No? You think, oh, that's not, that can't be that big a deal. But you know, I think it's a, I think it's a wonderful idea to do something new each month on your day. Mm -hmm. Each month on your day. And then also to be aware, are there limiting patterns within me, within my mind, places that I go again and again and again in my thinking that I'm ready to release now? You know, as the teacher archetype, we want to be open to outcome, not attached to outcome. I think a question that's really worth asking ourselves are who have been my greatest teachers in life? Go way back. Go way back. If you remember your first grade teacher or anybody else after that, think about who were the teachers. Now, they're not always the teacher teachers. You know, people show up in our life. Well, we say that people come into our lifetime for a reason, a season, or a lifetime. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes people who come in just for a reason are for, to give us an opportunity to have a really important teaching. Who are the sources of inspiration in your life today? I mean, who out there in the world that's doing something, that's saying something, that's got a message that lifts you and fills you? All right, who are the sources of challenge? Because here's where the growth is, right? There's always got to be that. So where am I very attached personally? Where am I very attached professionally? Can I just be where I am, even if I'm not clear? Am I OK with that uncomfortable, uncertain, I'm not clear yet? What current fears am I addressing? What current fears am I ignoring? Mm. Is there a life-negating family pattern I am consciously willing to break. Something maybe that's gone on for generations. And again, look at how you're handling loss. So all of these are aspects of that teacher archetype. And again, I believe that that teacher exists within us. It's about the internal teacher within. I think these are really interesting and important things for us to ask. Because again, all of these archetypes, archetypes are components of who and what we are. So let's turn within now. And so as we take a moment to become still and remind ourselves that right here where we are, the place whereon we stand is holy ground, I'm remembering for each and every one of us that yes, in fact, we are the warrior leader, we are the healer, we are the teacher. These divine ideas exist within each and every one of us and we are open, willing vessels for spirit's expression in a greater way than ever before. I speak the word knowing that we are surrounded and we are filled to the brim with that spirit of the living God, the spirit that is love itself. And I know for us today, 
that anything that does not serve us, whether it's a family pattern or something of our own, if it doesn't serve us anymore, whatever it may be, a, a habit, a way of being, an idea, doesn't matter where it came from or how long it's been. I know that in this moment, we are made new because we speak this word, which is the word of God. And we declare our own wholeness, our own well-being. I know for each and every one of us here that all of the concerns in our life, yes, there are concerns, but we have a God that is so much bigger than all of that. And so I claim for each and every one of us today a very big God, a God that is bigger than any seeming discord in our life or in the world that surrounds us. And we include in our prayer today our family members and friends and parents and children, Everybody we hold near and dear, see them in your mind's eye now and surround them with an energy of love, an energy of peace, light, and healing. And now expand that circle a little bigger to include not your immediate circle, not the people you're closest to. Okay, anybody you don't want to pray for, pray for them right now. This is the deal. This is the gig about expanding our consciousness, opening our heart, so that there is only an energy of high regard, of spiritual love for all people everywhere. And so we let this emanate out from us to touch all people on the face of the earth, everyone, everyone included. And we speak our word for peace and health and love and all needs met for all people everywhere. And so with an open, gracious, full heart, I say thank you, God, that this is the truth for each and every one of us. Thank you, God, for the life that we live and for the community that we share, for all of us together. And so with an open, gracious, full heart, I release this word into God's perfect law, and so it is. Together we all say, Amen. All right, we'll sing one time together. I am so so blessed I am so grateful for all that I have I am so blessed I am so blessed I am so grateful I am so blessed Alright, I invite you to hold your gift over your heart and we'll say our statement of giving together from the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you very much.
the story of that's the glory of love. Great. That's our own fabulous Mary Highland. Thank you, Mary. You can get Mary's music at M-A-R-H-Y-L-C at AOL.com. So go check that out. And how about our fabulous Sam and Sam? Great music every week. Thank you. Okay, uh, so if this is your first time at our church, we are delighted you are here. Please stop by the welcome table on the patio to pick up a packet of information just for you. For all the ways that you can make donations to our church, go to nhcrs.org slash give. That's G-I-V. Prayer with a practitioner is available after service in person here or on Zoom. So if you are on Facebook, switch over to Zoom. You can get prayer there. Wednesday evening service this week with Reverend Sidney Steen. The meditation starts at 6.50 p.m. The service starts at 7 p.m. <clears throat> Reverend Sidney's topic this week is Season for Nonviolence, Radical Forgiveness. Our youth church is open on Sundays for our 9.45 a.m. service, and we welcome youth of all ages. Feeding the homeless. Our love and kindness ministry will be feeding the homeless today at 12.30 p.m. To support this ministry, please go to our website. Volunteers and donations are always welcome. And as was mentioned at the beginning of the service, a reminder, our annual meeting is next Sunday, February 27th at 11.30 a.m. The annual meeting is for members of the North Hollywood Church and will be held in person and on Zoom. The Zoom link is the same link used for our Sunday and Wednesday services and can be found on our website. We look forward to seeing you there. Thank you for your consciousness. It is official that we will be returning to two services beginning Sunday, March 6th. Please remember that we will continue to do Zoom and Facebook Live at our 945 service only. But if you like the later service, 1130 is it for you. And our youth church will be open also for the 945 service only. We have a Zoom virtual patio before and after Sunday and Wednesday services. You can meet with your fellow congregants and Zoom meditation every morning on Monday, Mondays through Saturday at 8 a.m. Visit our website, nhcrs.org, to obtain Zoom links and more information about all our events and to sign up for weekly e-blasts and monthly newsletters. So now rise and we'll sing the peace song.
go. Please repeat after me. I'm at home in the heart of God. My life is anchored in truth. I can never be separate. I live in the consciousness of peace. I release all fear. I am living love. And just one extra thought. I told you last week that I'm taking a group to Japan in October. It's half full. So if you are interested, there are only six spots left. So check it out. Thanks. See you on the patio. Thank you.